to, to what extent do you think the, let's say the current system or, you know, modern day slavery or trap that we're in, in this world is by the consent of the people. And what happens when people in mass just literally stop acknowledging these people as having any type of power? Hmm. Well, the issue with consent is that it's ultimately a, it's ultimately a, an occult phenomenon. Because what you find in, whether in the alien field or like in demonology, for example, or possession, uh, these entities, they always try to gain consent in one way or another. These entities, they always try to gain consent through, but see, the thing is they don't just ask outright. I mean, they do sometimes, but but other times they don't. Other times, um, one, of the, one, one of the fallacies or issues that we have to look out for is the idea that consent is all or nothing, that it's black or white, you know, one or zero. It's not. It's a matter of degree. It can be like 0.001, it can be 0.5, it can be 0.7. It doesn't have to be zero or one. It can be a matter of degree. Uh, and so, uh, especially in Christianity with the idea that the devil or Satan tempts us. And over time, through us giving into temptation, we fall deeper and deeper under his grip. That, that, that archetype applies to aliens, it applies to demons, it applies to these, uh, new, these uh, corrupt elites that are trying to push a tyrannical global totalitarian system. Um, and, the, and I think the reason why they try to gain consent is for a number of reasons. One reason is because it is very efficient to do so. Mm. It's, more, it's more efficient to get someone to come with you than to try to grab them by the collar and grab them, right? It takes a lot of manpower, a lot of force, a lot of energy and time to do, to do that. And that's why, actually, that's also one of the reasons, just as a side note, why some of these negative alien factions have waited until now to make their big move in terms of disclosure and trying to take things over more overtly is because if they had tried to do that, let's say in the 1500s, we didn't have the technology back then other than the Catholic church really to control our own population in a very efficient and powerful way. Mm. But nowadays we've got satellites, soon artificial general intelligence, you know, cameras all over the place in our phones and our computers on the street corners, 5G, right? All these things, all these technology that we have right now is a control system that makes control way more efficient. And so if there's anything to be said about these beings is that they are extremely, well, I don't, I don't say lazy, but efficient. They're very efficient. And gaining consent is one of the most efficient things you can do. If you can get a people, an entire planet, to enslave itself and then do what you tell it to do, that is the ultimate form of efficiency. Because in theory, it would take only one alien to control an entire planet, the entire planet is under the control of a global government that obeys that one alien's commands. Now, I'm not saying there's only one alien. I'm just saying in theory yeah, yeah, yeah. that that does all it takes, right? That's like the ultimate form of efficiency. So that's one reason why consent is important. The other reason is because probably because there might be higher laws, whether cosmic laws or metaphysical laws that are enforced by divine beings um, for their for their own reasons and for our benefit that are enforced um, unless we abdicate that protection unless we give it up so if we give consent to these things then that kind of gives up that protection because we willingly chose to take the dark path mm. right so so these negative forces if they want to get at you if they want to be efficient and if they want to bypass the protection they have to gain consent so i think that's why the consent is such a big big part of it now the issue is that once they gain enough consent once they hit a certain threshold of consent at that point, they can take physical action in ways that they couldn't before that. Hmm. And we see that throughout history. We see that in uh, the, the Cultural Revolution in China, the Communist Revolution in Russia, right? Up to that point, they use manipulation, political maneuvering, and propaganda to try to get the people on board. But once enough people get on board, once enough people then get into power and are supported by the people, they can combine the two to crush the opposition physically, militarily, hmm. you know, or through, through famine, like they did in Ukraine, for example, the Holodomor. Those things, that, that's like the, the checkmate situation that is always a threat. It's always nipping at our heels. And so what right now only seems like political maneuvering with, um, well, like, like we saw during the, the lockdowns, for example, or a lot, a, lot, what, what a lot of big tech is supporting and TikTok and so on in terms of certain narratives that the, the young people are being programmed with, certain political orientations and so on. Right now, it's just all cultural stuff. It's political stuff. But eventually, it can come a time where that turns into uh, a checkmate situation where they would go for genocide or starvation or mass political imprisonment and so on. So that's what we are headed towards if we don't stop it sooner, you know? Yeah. So, right. So although although permission 
is such an important component of it, a point comes where uh, it is checkmate. And then it's no longer permission. Then it's just pure physical force. And you ask, well, will people do at that point? Well, there's going to be insurgency groups. There's going to be, uh, well, let's just leave it at that. There's going to be insurgency, possible civil war, because uh, people are not going to take it laying down. So 